Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for watching this video. It really means a lot to all of you guys support me so much and enjoy my videos. And I mean, if there's anything you want to see in particular or any changes, just make sure you let me know down in the comments. But today, once again, as always, we have another speed build. Uh, this is a continuation video of last week's. Um, so it's the same lavender fields. However, this time we are working on the exterior and more of the landscaping, whereas last week we did the interior of the main house. So I mentioned that I had two other structures on this lot, and this is one of them. So I made this nice little barn, and then I go ahead and make the windmill. Now the windmill was a little tricky. I definitely had to practice this a few times before I did the final edit, um, and it still took a lot of um, trial and error and a lot of changing my mind and just kind of like getting the best look. I still not quite sure how I feel about it, but I think it turned out all right. Um, I don't know, windmills are, are kind of hard. It, they're definitely weird structures and there's not really some, like the, the game doesn't really have all the pieces for them to like really make it work. So I use the diagonal roofs as kind of like the windmill pieces and then um, a wall decoration, the like kind of peg looking thing to go in the middle to kind of make it look more realistic, I guess, because the box just kind of looks weird because um, where the roofs cross that um, the roof piece is still intact and it makes like a weird box. So I wanted to make it look a little more normal. So I put that wall piece in there. And then the rest of the roofs were just kind of trial and error to figure out what would look right. Um, but I did make the interior pretty usable as well, so I am pretty happy with that. Um, up on the top level, there is like kind of like a window seat nook area that I could imagine like um, a teenager wanting to come out and hang out there, read a book, or I mean even anyone. Um, I think that would just be a great place. Um, to just kind of like get some quiet and some refreshing air. And I, I just thought that that was, that was great. Uh, and then on the bottom level, so the middle level is not usable space really. It's just the ladder entrance and the ladder to the third floor. However, there is like the porch. Um, so that is semi-usable, but I didn't really put anything up there. And then down on the bottom level, there's um, kind of like a hobby area. So there's a flower arranging table and just some decorations to make it look a little uh, more homey. So that, that's basically the, the windmill. I do go back and do a little landscaping around it and add in some flowers uh, to just kind of make it fit in with the, the rest of the build. Um, but this was one of the inspiration pieces to this build. Since I mentioned before that I uh, saw a painting of a um, windmill in front of a tulip field, and I thought that that was just, you know, I don't know, that it, it was just a very calming and serene looking photo. Um, so I, was, I really wanted to build something like that. And I, I think it's a really fun, fun piece to play with. Then for the barn, going back a little bit, <laughs> um, we, the attic space area, um, upstairs, second floor, whatever you want to call it, of the barn is more of a hayloft and a little storage. So I put some of the hay bales in there. Um, honestly, I, I didn't realize that we had these in the game until just recently, and I, I'm really loving them. Um, I think that uh, they, they give a little more of a country vibe, and I really like that. Uh, and then, also as I mentioned, so this is in um, Brindleton Bay, which is the cats and dogs area. So I wanted to turn this build into almost like a kennel space or like a shelter. So I added in just like some more dog beds and food bowls and um, a bunch of like toy boxes for all the dogs that would be coming through here. Uh, I didn't do anything for cats, however, 
that might be something that I go back and change later on um, when I'm actually playing in this build. However, um, the problem with multiple feed bowls is then um, you have to fill all of them because your dogs don't seem to care which bowl they eat from. And if they find an empty bowl, then they, they don't go find a full bowl, which is a little annoying. But um, you would think that they, they would be smart enough to go find a, a full bowl, but we don't want our puppers to be starving. And then, all right, so the fencing that I use for all the way around this is actually debug fence. So it's not a real fence, and I had to place each piece individually which was a bit of a pain, but I think it is definitely worth it. I mean, I, I mainly just went around the perimeter of the build. Um, and I just feel like uh, this fence kind of suits the feel of the build a little better. Um, and it also saves you a little money because it, it's free fencing. So I was like, yeah. Um, and then, ooh, okay, so since it, I'm thinking it's a kennel, that space right by the barn, I put in a bunch of like training stuff for the dog. So I put in um, like the, the jumping hoops and like the little tunnels. And I think that that's awesome because we have a little obstacle course. So even though um, we don't necessarily own all the dogs, we can still train them. And then uh, oh, this part took quite a bit of time. I placed a whole lot of lavender. so. Uh, I used all debug lavender, um, and there's a few different types of lavender bushes. So there's like the single space ones, and then there's like a, a line one, and then there's like a big bush. So I did one of each, and then I also changed up the colors to kind of break it up a little bit, since um, if it was all one color, the field would look very just monotone, and I feel like that's not really how fields look. Um, even if it, it, it's basically the same lavender, then um, like, uh, you still get different variations. So I use like the darker blue, the purple, and then the big bush is kind of more of a pink. Uh, and I think that that looks really great. Um, the pink definitely brings in a little more brighter tones, since the dark blue and the purple are pretty like dark, obviously, <laughs> dark blue. Um, so the, the pink just kind of brings a little accent to it. And then this is another fun part. So I always think of like old trucks being turned into like flower patches almost. Like you just throw a bunch of dirt in the tailgate and then turn it into like a flower box. And I think that that looks like a, it's definitely a little tacky, but I think it uh, definitely adds character. Um, so I wanted to add that in, and then I also added in some tire tires filled with flowers later on, so I'll go back and recenter that. Um, and then for the the stones, um, I went back and forth between wanting to just like use debug stones and like the individual ones to give it a little more. Um, you can curve it better because the like line of stones have like a weird S shape to them. But I, I just went with those and then did the outer perimeter. And then the next thing I did, so this is a pool. However, I didn't put a ladder in, so you're not going to really, yeah, you, you shouldn't swim in there, so you don't want to die. Um, and then I just covered out the like border of it with like some grass and some rocks. Um, and I added some lily pads just to kind of make it look more like a pond and less like a pool. Since um, I feel like you know farms have like a little a farm pond, um, yeah, yeah, I think it looks really nice and it definitely adds a little bit. Um, just because like this is such a huge build, uh, it's a it's a pretty big lot. Um, so I, I had plenty of space for a lot of different things, and I think it, it looks really nice. So um, um, ooh, and then I put it on that tree that kind of um provides a little shade and I turned this into like a little campfire spot um because I, I so I went through and I added like some campfires and some log chairs um I don't think I, I do that right here but um do that later on so make sure you watch out for that and then um this is just like the landscaping so I try to keep my landscaping 
to um, similar or the same flowers since I feel like if you have too many different ones then it just kind of looks strange almost. Um, like uh, I, I used to be afraid that if I used the same ones then it would just look very repetitive. Um, and I want to like show that like I have flower arranging skills but like using all the different ones I feel like it just doesn't look right. And then I just add one of like either the wildflowers or like the oopsie daisies or the yellow flowers just to kind of give it a base to work off of um, and just kind of like fill space, I guess. Um, so I, yeah, that's what I did in front of the house just to add a little bit more. And then, um, so there I'm adding in um, some like family usable space. So we got um, two horseshoe pits. I know you only really need to use one uh, in order to play horseshoe. However, I feel like, you know, if you're actually playing horseshoes, like you, you have two, two pits. Um, so I put two in just for like decorative purposes. And then um, you saw me just place the obstacle course for the puppers. And then I'm recentering this truck here, like I mentioned earlier, to give it the more um, like flower area. So here's the screenshots. Um, a lot of these are taken like in the more in eating day time, um, just because I want oh, to see a few different lightings. So there's the barn. That's one of my favorite pictures. Um, and yeah, so this is Bill. Let me know what you think. Um, I hope you all have a marvelous Monday. Bye.